Good morning. We're back on the wood stove project again today. We're gonna start getting things cleaned up and get it ready. I this is the the Hardy H4 that I've got here. It looks a little different. I've got the all the covers and everything taken off so I could check it out. It was a used stove, so I wanted to look everything over pretty good, check for cracks, what have you. So I've got the back off. I also took the top off and so I could inspect everything. This is the hot water coil that's in there for heating domestic hot water and what have you. I had to clean a bunch of silicone and stuff off the top here. So we're going to flush this thing out with water. I'm going to fill it up and hopefully all that silicone will float out so we don't get it caught up in stuff later. And then I'm also gonna, going to clean some ashes and stuff out of the bottom so that it's ready to go after we get it set up. Hopefully we can get that done today. Okay, I finally got the inside cleaned out. <clears throat> it wasn't cleaned out very well by the previous owner, and now I kind of understand why. It's not super easy. Those grates are pretty heavy. Um, these ones on the left won't quite sit down because the side of the stove is buckled in, but we got pretty much everything cleaned out. Get a shot in there. So that ought to be good for getting it fired up. Now I've got the hose turned back on. I shut it off so it wouldn't soak me while I was working in there. But we're just about full. And I don't know if you can see in the sun all that stuff that's floating on top. We're going to let it run a little while and see if I can get the, some of that stuff to float off the top. <clears throat> so at least it's not in there whenever we go to fire it up after we put the top on. So we'll see if we can get that cleaned up. I'll fill this up and while that's draining, we'll go over and get started on prepping the site for the stove, get some blocks for it leveled up and ready to go. Well, it looks like my camera ran out of storage and stopped halfway through that, so I uh, didn't catch some footage of how I was leveling those up, but what ended up working best was using that orange dead blow hammer there, and I'd set the level across and then adjust each block as I was going, just to get everything level. <clears throat> it's not perfect. Um, there was a lot of stuff that I was working on, working on, kept going back and forth and never could quite get it perfect, but... These are just blocks on gravel too, so it's going to be hard to do. Once I get the stove on there and filled full of water, it's going to settle in a little bit anyway. So I think that will be good. Alright, we've got the backhoe over there warming up, getting ready to go. We're going to move the stove into place here. According to the last owner, the lifting procedure for these is through the chimney there. So we've got a chain drop through the chimney and a couple short 2 by 6s double wrapped there so that will pull up against the bottom of the firebox and lift it seems pretty logical there's quite a bit of bracing and stuff there and there's not much other good way to lift this so we're going to try that <clears throat>
Well, that worked out pretty well. We're sitting here on the blocks. Um, it looks like it could use a little bit of settling in, but I'm sure as I fill it with water, that will get taken care of. But <clears throat> this thing really wasn't too he terribly heavy. Luckily, the cylinders, the dip or yeah, dump dip cylinders on the backhoe leaked down a little bit, so I just parked it over where I thought I needed it and got off and was able to let those leak down real slow and position it uh, as they came down. And even then, once it was on the ground, it wasn't too bad. Like I can, I can still slide this in position if I need to. But now that we're here, we've still got to put the top back on. I set it up there because there was some rocks in my bucket that I was afraid might fall down into the furnace or the boiler if I didn't put it on there. So it's up there, but it needs to be screwed on and sealed. And then we need to start on our plumbing back here. So we've got some of what's left over if I can get the sun out of the way there. Um, this, this here. And then this, those both will just get capped off. Those are the, connect to the coil inside for the domestic hot water. And then that was the solenoid valve to fill the stove. Um, I don't have any, uh, won't have any water out here, at least this year, uh, to have an automatic fill. So we'll just get rid of that. Down here, I'm going to do a little something to clean up that drain. Um, I'm probably going to put a larger at bare minimum i got to put a larger pex connector on there because i've got one inch pex and apparently they used three quarters last time and same over here so that's the outlet coming out of the pump to go to the house so what i'm thinking is i've got all this pex and it's one inch so it's fairly rigid i don't want to cut it too short in case something were to happen so i think i'm gonna loop it up and then come down and loop up over somehow <clears throat> just to maintain some pipe length there um, same with the the drain that'll go back in there i'm probably going to loop it up and then come back down um, i don't think that will cause any problems and for the moment i just want to kind of keep the pipe length if it does cause any issues well then we can just cut the pipe shorter and put the other fittings in there but i got to run and go get some fittings and then we'll be working on getting this plumbed up all right, we've got everything plumbed up. It's dark. We're here a couple days after the time change, so all my evening work here has been in the dark. We're, we've got the plate put on top and all sealed down. Plumbing here, I'll go through all this in the light sometime when we can see it and I can explain what I actually did here. But I've got to get that cover on the outside of this thing. It's supposed to rain tomorrow and I'm by myself and it's dark. So we're going to try and do this the best we can, and I'll video it as we go.
well it's on there but that wasn't very pretty i came pretty close to crunching it a couple times so probably not one of my greater ideas but we did get it on it uh, slid down over the the firebox door and stuff like it was supposed to we're folded out quite a bit at the back i don't know if i just tweaked it or if it's i kind of think it's just sitting low not on the the uh, concrete blocks like it needs to so we'll go to to putting some of it together and see if we can get it squared up and a little bit better all right now that we so delicately placed the cover over the outside to start getting it put all back together we've got this piece that goes at the bottom here we'll get that screwed on and see if we can get the the door put on and get everything lined up so i'll set you down here so you can see watch what i'm doing We'll see if this will work out. Now we're ready for the stacks. All right, with that, we should be pretty well rain ready. We'll do a walkthrough sometime in the light and show you what all we've got going on here. But for tonight, I think I am done. We're back in the light now so I can show you what we've got going on and how we've got everything hooked up. The, you can see our uh, PEX tubing and stuff comes up in the middle here. If I was going to do this again, uh, the next time I set a stove like this, I will shift it off to the side so that this comes up more in this area. We had some struggles keeping the pecs away from this flat door here so i've just got the thermostat wire coiled up in the bottom like i said we're not using that yet i've got the 12-2 wire um, i didn't want to cut off anything more than i needed to in case i need it some at some point later so i just curled that up and came in the bottom there for the pecs again the same thing i didn't want to cut off any more than i needed in case i would need it later so these came up and came up the left side over here and then up to the top and you can see those those black things on there those are uh, bend braces 90 degree bend braces for the pecs this is one inch pecs and it really didn't want to turn want to bend that sharp uh, but those braces really help it uh, bend a little sharper with and keep it from kinking so it came over we're following the red pipe now we got another bend brace and then I came straight down uh, and there's a Y strainer and the pump so we're coming this will be the hot side so we're coming out of the pump up through the Y strainer over around and down on this Y strainer I was gonna get one of the pla clear plastic Y strainers that I see a lot of people on their hydronic systems used um, I found that and at Menards anyway that plastic clear one was $73 and this one inch brass one was 32 so I mean make your own decision on that it would be kind of nice to be able to see stuff go through it but I think ultimately this is going to be a better strainer and less than half the price so for the return so again we came out of the bottom 
came up around the top, followed around. This time we didn't have to use a brace, we had a little bit more gentle of a curve. And we stuck a, another brace into it here, and then went down into a T, or into an elbow, then into a T, and then that will go into the tank. Having some trouble getting a shot of that. Um, so that ball valve controls what goes in or out of the tank, and then there's a hose bib, hose spigot, whatever, on the other side, so that whenever we go to drain this, I can hook up a hose to it. I think this will work out pretty well. Um, I already kicked the pump on, and it seems to, to circulate it fine and everything, no problem. So we're going to give this a try. If you want to go back to the part one video to see how we did the pecs and put it in the ground, uh, and then the next video, we'll be firing this up for the first time and see how it works. We'll see you later.